Hey there guys, how are you? Welcome back to another awesome video. And today, we're going to talk about showdowns. We all love a good fight, whether it's physical, emotional, psychological, or just a good classic good versus evil. There's been many forms of fights in many forms of media that the most underrated form of, the, of seeing showdowns, fights, thralls, is television. Specifically, animation. So, let's look at the, in my opinion at least, the best and my favorite animated TV show fights. So let's look at the top 15 animated TV showdowns. Why top 15? Because I like to go above the nostalgia critic once in a while. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's get into it. And number 15, Jack versus Aku from Samurai Jack. A very classic yin and yang fight as we see in the beginning. And, and just the introduction itself just explains this sort of, not rivalry, but in a way this sort of like um, anticipation that's building up from how Samurai Jack was so close to nailing Aku with his sword and then flinging into the future that it took them I think it was like seven seasons or eight seasons to finally have this epic showdown happen and it's so satisfying to see these two finally face once and for all and like I said it's just a really great classic fight of and a classic yin and yang situation and scenario number 14 Ben 10's final showdown. Now I know the fight between Ben 10 versus Vilgax in Alien Force was pretty iconic, but I really like this one a lot for many reasons. Not only is this the finale of Ben 10 Ultimate Alien, and in my opinion, Ultimate Alien was my favorite series out of the Ben 10 series. I kind of favor Ben 10, the first Ben, D ben 10 a little bit more nowadays, but st I still love Ultimate Alien. And... In many cases, to make this sort of like you guys maybe understand this a little better, is that Ultimate Alien, its finale, was like the end game of Ben 10. And seeing the big, like having that big fight with way big and that, what was that? That Daggeron, whatever the hell his name was, the big tentacle squid. It wasn't Vilgax, it was another dude. And then having that, then having that final showdown with Vilgax. Satisfying, bringing it all together, doing some good callbacks, and this really perfect, satisfied, but very emotional showdown that sort of ends how you didn't really, I guess, expect in a way. So, I guess there's that. Number, oops, I was gonna say number eight. Number 13, Batman versus Owl Man. Batman the Brave and the Bold. Now, I really wish I could have said um, the fight between Batman, Owlman, and Crisis on Two Earths, but I might save that for another list. We shall see. Depending on how good this does, I'll save that for another list. So, this is the best thing I got in terms of Batman vs. Owlman, because I always liked that dynamic of those two battling each other out, and this one's just plain cool. I like it, honestly. It's not too much like complex like how Crisis did it, but I do like this one as well because um, how Owlman in basically invades Batman's ca obviously Batcave and how they bounce off each other and how they're able to counter one another and just how different their, I guess, personas work, like how bats fight compared to owls fight because Owlman at one point says this thing about um, I fight differently compared to you. I don't know. But it's so cool that they did a part two to this episode where Owlman's now disguised as Batman and the two of them fight each other. And it gets even better with the fact that you have the Joker involved and, and he has to work and he's forced to work with Batman makes it even such a better fight. Those two co like basically combined. Number 12 is Batman. Oops, not Batman. Wait. Yeah. Spidey versus Venom in Spider-Man the Animated Series and Spectacular Spider-Man. So, 
it was tough to put which which Spider-Man vs. Venom fight on here, but I really like these both. So, with and the animated series, the 90s cartoon, this is kind of like an iconic fight to me a little bit, because not only is it the fact that Spider-Man and Venom are like almost like arch nemesises, and they're like rivals, and they really are parallels in many, in many aspects, both Spider-Man and Venom, and Peter Parker, and Eddie Brock, but... What I like about this fight so much is this is obviously the fight where Eddie and the symbiote are like, we're taking revenge on both Spider-Man and Peter Parker for what they did to us. And now that the symbiote's with Eddie Brock, the symbiote knows, hey, Eddie, our friend Spider-Man's also Peter Parker, so you might want to pummel him in a way. And he's rough, he's like not rough housing with him, but he's rustling with him, beating him up, basically throwing down like facts saying that, hey, we've bonded, me and this symbiote, and we're gonna basically destroy you, and we have a common threat. And the best way that they try to take two, kill two birds with one stone is they try to expose Spider Man for being Peter Parker and try to get him on live television. That, I don't know why, just seems like a really iconic fight. And then there's the one in Spectacular Spider-Man. Now, I like when Eddie Brock first has the symbiote in that show and the whole Thanksgiving parade they have and all that, and even at night, the fights they've had. But I specifically like when they fought at the school because this is kind of like Venom's revenge a little bit. So, you have Venom basically, obviously he's out for revenge after how much uh, Spider-Man kind of humiliated both Eddie Brock and Venom. And how this Eddie Brock kind of saw Peter Parker as a brother. Because not only um, did they go to high school together, but both their parents died in the same sort of airplane and the same crash. So it kind of makes sense they have this sort of nice little bond. And it, that's what makes this fight even more deeper and what I like about it. But also the fact that this is also the one where he's like, you know what? You humiliate us, we're going to humiliate you. We're not just going to expose... Um, we're not just going to humiliate you. We're going to expose you to the entire world and show you how... And show the world how much of a jerk you are and how much you really betrayed us. And once anyone finds out who you are, everyone's going to turn on you and everything. And it's so, like... It felt, like, really dramatic. And I liked that a lot about this fight. So, really two great classic showdowns in the Spider-Man cartoons. And number 11 is the Insidious 6. This is an, is the, is, um, oh yeah, Spider-Man anime series. <laughs> Got to throw that in. This, I like the most because, um, not only does this have these, uh, basically the Sinister 6 together, but what I like about this one is this is very genius a little bit. Because not only do you have Spider-Man fighting a, like basically he's by himself in this scenario and he's kind of got to face all six of these villains at the same time but what really ups the antis is not only he's by himself number one number two he is very low on his powers so his powers are very weak so the fact that he has weak powers and he's able to still manage to be the spider-man that he is and try and fight these guys is really powerful and really impressive and the third thing is how clever he he basically was trying to like ties things up because they at first see that Spider Man's Peter Parker, but then he then he says that oh no I'm not Spider Man and everything I'm just I just dress up as Spider Man because Spider Man couldn't get to you guys and it's it all is very funny because the villains are like you know what the kid's right um. Spider-Man wouldn't be fighting as pathetic and as wimpy and as weak as Peter Parker did. So they, they he goes through his whole elaborate scheme of basically luring them to Spider-Man and it's Peter and obviously this big back and forth flip-flop. It's just really funny and it's just really great and smart. I like how this plays out a lot and just having these villains fight together and then be knocked out one by one, pin by pin, basically basically put pit against each other is just really fun. Alright, we're at my top 10 already. So at number 10 is Batman versus Batman from Justice League Unlimited. 
So, this is the big, I think like, this wasn't a big event, but this is like a two-parter episode or a one-parter episode that had basically the Justice League meeting another, an Elseworlds version of themselves called the Justice Lords. And they're a lot more basically dictator-like. So, this, so the so sure the, the Justice League fight versus the Justice Lords is cool, but I like the Batman versus Batman fight more because this is a lot more compelling. Sure, it's not that engaging, and it's not very action-heavy, but I like the emotion kind of going behind, like going on between both Batman. Because you got one Batman saying, you guys are basically like dictators, and you're kind of ruling things with an iron fist and everything, and there's no freedom. And then how Just Lord Batman is replying to that, to our Batman saying, well... People lost that freedom, and freedom's not destroyed, and kind of like basically, um, this sort of like counters between the two of them, both physical and verbal. And then it becomes really, really, I guess, complex and really compelling to me is when that moment, um, Batman, our Batman, is kind of like basically saying, hey, you guys are power hungry and crazy and whatnot and he goes well the other batman goes well with our power we could kind of stop the like we could stop many bad guys specifically robbers and crooks that ever murdered parents in front of their eight-year-old child and that just hits bruce wayne and he drew our bruce wayne he drops a battering and just have this moment of he says you know what you win I love the sort of dialogue between these two, and that's what I like. Not just the sort of like the fists that that they physically match, that they evenly match each other out, but how compelling this is. Very verbal and very deep to the heart. For our character, obviously, our caped crusader. And number nine is Batman versus Rachel Ghoul. Batman, the animated series. So what people, a lot of people don't um, know with Rachel Ghoul is Rachel Ghoul is someone um, a lot of non-comic book people are kind of underestimated about him. He just, they just think, okay, he's just a dude that's old and he just wears like these fancy outfits. There's a lot more to Rachel than you expect for an old man because this is, this, this is the fight that proves that Ra's al Ghul is not just intellect, he is physically and intellectually better, if not equal, to Batman. Because in the animated series, Ra's al Ghul is always comparing Batman to himself. He's always saying, you're my equal. You're my, I'm your better. I'm your equal. So, what better way to show that is through this sword fight. And you could really see through the, not the theatrics, but you could see through um, how physical and how strong Ra's al Ghul is in this battle. And the fact that he's not only, the, it's because of the fact that he's kind of like immortal in a way, number one. And two, he's got a lot of skills up in there. He is the leader of the League of Assassins. He trained all those ninjas. He trained his, her, his own daughter. He trained like all these other mercenaries like like Lady Shiva. He trained his own grandson, Damien. He trained, um, he trained, uh, I think he trained Deathstroke at one point. He that's why he plays a big, sort of not big part, but he plays a big aspect in the fact that he trained Oliver, had an uh, influence in Oliver Queen and, and the Arrowverse a little bit and, and that whole thing. Because his physical attributes, but his also his intellectual attributes. So what I like about this fight is it's not just br it's not just brawn, it's also brain, but it's combining the two really well because these are two both pretty physically strong men, but also mentally strong men at each other. So well crafted, without a doubt. Number eight, Stardust is unbreakable. Jojo Bizarre. I've, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I've mentioned this, that I'm not a big anime person, but due to a few people that I know, um, I'm going to call two people out real quick. Jay Christensen, my boy Jay, Jeffrey, 
he's got me into Dragon Ball here and there a little bit. And my friend Jesse has got he, the one who made who requested a silent voice, and he's got me. He's he's kind of like a big fan of JoJo Bazaar. Uh, he has shown me. I've seen this sort of fight because he's got me into JoJo a little bit, just a tiny bit. So seeing this fight is pretty brutal. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of awesome. I'm not, and I'm gonna be honest on that too. Because you have our antagonist, antagonist, Kira, Yoshikage Kira, going up against our main protagonist, uh, Jotaro. So what's really interesting about how this fight goes is how it starts. Because basically, Shotaro is dissing how the way Kira dresses by just saying, your watch sucks. And that's it. And then how... He, Kira unleashes Killer Queen, tries to haul ass on him, and it doesn't work out whatsoever. And it becomes this brutal fight, and it's pretty OP. But then you just see how impressive Shotaro is, power-wise, compared to Kira. Because Kira is, I guess, known for being like a very like intimidating antagonist, an intimidating threat, especially with Killer Queen. And yes... Killer Queen is named after Killer Queen, the song by Queen. Boom. So that's what makes Kira even more awesome, number one. <laughs> so the fact that Jotaro is able to not anticipate his moves, but to block him and be quicker than Kira really took me by shock. And he just brutally beats the shit out of him. And I was even shocked to see this because I've been told that Kira is like a pretty powerful OP villain and then Shotaro comes along and just basically trash talks about his watch and just beats him down fist after fist and it's pretty epic not gonna lie and number seven Robin versus Slade Teen Titans I'm a big Teen Titans fan and one of the big arcs I loved about Teen Titans the good Teen Titans is the Slade arc I like to call it when we were introduced to Slade, aka Deathstroke, and how much of an impact this character left on Robin. Not on us, well, it kind of left an impact on us, but on Robin as a character. He definitely forwarded him and developed him a lot more stronger as a character and as a hero, making Robin push more limits and kind of going further than you'd expect Robin to go. He's going into risky, darker sort of basically territory this being also the, i think the not prelude but i think this is the aftermath or this even follows up with when you have the teen titans fight red x and even that red x story arc fits into this whole whole scenario because of how like obsessive robin becomes of trying to figure out who the slade guy is what does he want from robin and, and all these other things and seeing these weird visions and having these like like visions almost like as if it's fate for Robin and Slade to fight each other to the point where Robin poses as Red X and then has to sabotage himself to look like he's not trying to hurt but attack his fellow teammates this being a low-key project having to be this Red X character to then infiltrate Slade to be his apprentice and try and take down Deathstroke and even just all the other complexities that come with it, like the one vision he has where he sees himself as Slade and how that can kind of, how that developed him and made Robin more stronger as we've seen him progress to the final moment when he meets with Slade is just, I don't know what to say, it's just, it's beautiful. At number six is Natero versus Miram. For you Hunter x Hunter fans out there, this had to have been something really awesome for you guys. And I don't know much about Hunter vs. Hunter, but I've heard that this, I guess, was built up from the get-go. So that kind of surprises me. But seeing this happen is just another OP fight, just like Kiran and Shotaro. Epic, brutal, OP, both these fights, especially this fight, Nitter... Netero versus Miram just was in a really challenging fight. 
And this almost feels, this has like Dragon Ball vibes to it in a way. Sort of some aspects. The way the fight is, the way it's crafted, and even the intellect behind it. Because they keep, because these two, like, basically combatants refer to their fight as like a game of chess. One makes the move and, and the other person's basically two steps ahead. While the next person is four steps and vice versa. And so on and so forth. So that's I think what makes this really clever and really, really well animated and pretty awesome. All right, we're nearing down already my final five my list. And that number five is Darth Maul and Savage Repress versus Darth Sidious from Star Wars The Clone Wars. This was one of the best fights for me. Ever. Not only is it a, a great Sith on Sith fight, but it's really, this is another compelling fight. Because here is Darth Sidious. All this time throughout seasons 1 through 4, or seasons 1 through 4, wait, it was seasons 1 through 4, that the Emperor thought that Darth Maul was dead. And so did we. But by season 4, season 5, yeah, season four, season five, we find out Maul's still alive. And that was the, not only was that the biggest twist, but what makes this even more interesting is how this ends with Darth Maul basically coming encounter with his old, his old master and his old master coming encounter with his old apprentice and having that interactions. And the fact that Maul is kind of, in the Emperor's eyes, crossed the line of the rule of two and straight up kills his brother, and you we just see Maul suffer through this whole fight, getting his ass beaten to him a little bit. It's like almost like master on master like quality here. And in the end, Sidious is just torturing her, torturing Maul. And it's just really cool. It was really compelling. And it's engaging as well for a fight between only three people in one room. And then it expands further, and it just becomes more exhilarating towards the end. Until... Yeah. And number four is Vegeta versus Goku Black. Now, I was suggested when I was doing this um, list, I was going through, like, what ideas I should maybe... Like, what fights I would like, and then some people made suggestions on what I should check out. And this was one I thought, you know what? I haven't thought of a Dragon Ball fight, because I know how many Dragon Ball fans are going to be like, how do you not have a Dragon Ball fight? So, this is the one that I really liked the most. Not only have I been intrigued by Goku Black in some little clips here and there I've seen of the... What is it? I don't know where he's from. I forgot which series. Dragon Ball Super, I think it is. I'm just going to go rough guess and say Super. So ever since I've seen clips of Super, I've been in really interested by Goku Black. I don't know why. It just, he's really cool villain. So, to have this, to have this really cool villain face the Prince of All Saiyans, Vegeta, was really interesting. Because Vegeta was kind of considered a villain. So it's almost like a, vil like a villain versus an anti-hero, anti-villain kind of character right now. Because Vegeta's... Buddy, but not buddy, buddy, but kind of like working with Goku. So basically, you have Goku while he's fighting Zamasu. You have this really crazy, absurd, insane fight from going one wall to the next wall of Vegeta and Goku Black clashing and everything. And it really becomes super awesome and really dramatic. And a lot I did not expect to happen, especially since Goku Black is so he's like godlike. And he stabs Vegeta, which I did not expect. And that became just superly brutal for me. And really almost shocking. And then, even after getting stabbed in the gut by Black, Vegeta comes back, Super Saiyan Blue, and basically says, you're this pathetic nothing. And just grabs him, he slam him down, throw him around, doing all sorts of crazy things. And... A lot of stuff that just, it's really cool to see. And then for you Dragon Ball fans, this is probably a good fight. I'm not going to lie. I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. And number three is Ahsoka Confronts Vader, Star Wars Rebels. This was the season finale of Star, season finale of Star Wars Rebels. It was season two's finale, where 
in for, in the beginning of season two, we we see Vader. Obviously, we get the idea that oh my gosh, we're gonna see Vader, and then if, and then we kind of cut to season finale where Vader shows up. Not only after the fact that we saw Maul dis come back, yeah, that's right, Darth Maul's still alive, guys. <laughs> he destroys all the Inquisitors. Number one, two, not takes out Kanan, and then we have an interesting um, interaction with Vader and Maul. But then it all closes up with this compelling, like, duel between Ahsoka, who's no longer with the Jedi Order, now sort of facing her old master, and the, how, like, intense and how emotional that's gonna be for her, and trying to basically get her master back, but in the end she realizes that there's no going back for him anymore. And you can really, and this shows how dramatic and how emotional Ahsoka is internally. And this also shows externally how Va how Anakin is gone. Anakin Skywalker is dead and Vader lives. And that's all it's going to be is the monster that is Darth Vader. And how you don't even know what even happens because everything just gets closed up. And, you, and Ahsoka is just... Fighting off Vader and Ezra is just like, no! Because everything just, the whole like holocron like temple just closes in and you're just left with like an a, a, almost a suspenseful like jaw dropping finale and a jaw dropping showdown. Number two is Batman versus the Joker. Batman the Aired Series. There are so many fights between Batman versus Joker and all the other cartoons, but I had to bring it to the very first cartoon we see Batman versus Joker. And not a specific fight. This is containing any events that they've had and occurred in any of the episodes. And sure, they've never really physically kind of threw fists. They threw them once or twice and it's kind of in like a short minute or maybe a few seconds. Because then in the end, Joker escapes or runs off. And then Batman's chasing him. And then he takes him out. And he's knocked out from the floor. But I think it's not just the fight that they have. But it's also kind of like this thrilling, engaging chase these two always have. Because you always see, no matter what, film, TV show, video game, comics. It's always been this back and forth Joker and Batman always fighting against each other. Basically how Heath Ledger always said, we're destined to do this forever. And this is one of the the peaks and one of the epitomes of that moment and of we're destined to do this forever sort of aspect. And that's mainly the best thing to really put it. And you've got two of the greatest voice actors right here, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill doing this for years and they keep going at each other. And no matter which fight it is, whether it's Christmas and the Joker or um, what was it? What was the the last laugh? I think there is. There's one episode, and I think there's Harlequinade, and there's like a f there's another one. I can't remember what it's called. But no matter which one you like the best, all those fights are accommodated in this spot because of how much these two are at each other and the thorn and how much you sh you see the Joker being a thorn in Batman's side. All right. So, before I unveil my number one pick, here are a few quick honorable mentions. Shadow vs. Sonic. Sonic X. I thought this was really cool when I was younger, and even looking back on it now, it's not too compelling of a fight, but it's still cool. It's interesting because you have, you have Shadow who's always proven to be the better and to be the fastest, the strongest, the smartest compared to Sonic and how they rival each other in a way and they try and best each other out. Yoda's inner dark side. This was really awesome to see, especially if you got to, you guys got to see season six, the, the lost season, and seeing this episode was really awesome. Because you get to see, in a way, Yoda's like almost like inner dark side. And it's kind of like almost like fighting your inner demons. Which is pretty strong and heavy for a Star Wars concept. Boba Fett versus Mace Windu. The concept behind this, not necessarily a fight, but kind of in a way, really is cool. I like the idea of how Boba Fett, a young Boba Fett, finally got to get the chance to 
trap and almost destroy the Jedi Master that murdered his father. And it leads up to quite a decent fight, but the concept is really awesome. Let's see. Superman versus Darkseid. Now, I really like the now the, the fight he has in Justice League Unlimited is really epic because that's when Superman gives Darkseid his big final punch to the face. But it's that one fight he has when he first encounters him on Apocalypse and Superman the Age series, how like heavy the the fight becomes and how it ends is really strong because you have Darkseid being carried up from like his people. And Darkseid says this thing about I've told you many, and I've told you, um, I've told you many things, Superman. But here, I am considered God. Words to really be like, whoa, to me at least. Hobgoblin versus the Green Goblin, Spider-Man: The Animated Series. Not the most, not the most creative, or the most really fed cool fights but this one was just really fun for me i remember like when i watched this when i was younger and i first saw these two goblins like throw bombs at each other and chase each other around throughout new york city i was like this is engaging this is cool you got mark hamill's hobgoblin so that's another bonus and you got like how green goblins trashing hobgoblin saying you're this cheap imitation and you're pathetic and all this other things so it's it's kind of a little bit engaging, not really the most complex, but fun. I thought it was fun at least. Batman confronts his fears. Batman narrates series. This is the one where he faces Scarecrow, and not only that, because Scarecrow is definitely an underrated Batman villain, and he's very. You'd be surprised how like threatening and intimidating and very like villainous and sinister Scarecrow is, but. This is the episode that gave us the iconic, I am vengeance, I am the knight, I am Batman! Like that whole speech. This episode gave us that. So, nothing else to say, really. Alright, we're finally here. My number one pick of my top 15 animated TV showdowns is... Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan Kenobi. Star Wars The Clone Wars. I love The Clone Wars so much. It's just one it was one of the best things ever out of Star Wars. Almost as good if not I don't want to say it's better than the original trilogy, but it's really up there in terms of like the best Star Wars. But yeah. And I think that's kind of and I think this is this this has to go with this that, that argument because what was really something simple and what was something really like cool with one of the, at least one of the good things one of the cool things with the prequels was you had Darth Maul and he we and the prequels gave us this really great badass character that was very he was very silent he didn't say much of a word and how he murders Qui Gon Jinn and here's Obi Wan Kenobi he cuts him in half who would have thought to bring back Darth Maul in a in a animated cartoon series of Star Wars. Make him this vengeful, PTSD-like warrior of a monster, of a Sith Lord, come back for revenge on the guy that sliced him in half, and then make it this really amazing arc, and made it kind of, made Clone Wars even more awesome because Clone Wars was awesome from like one, two, three, and four, like those four seasons. And by four se by the fourth season, the fifth season, and even it plays a little bit in the sixth season, how amazing it was to get not really the fan service, but seeing fan favorite Darth Maul have him return with this vengeance and with his and, not, and it was kind of cool. We got a bonus that we got to have a character, his brother, voiced by Clancy Brown, but the real, the real deal was how much this guy has been waiting to have his revenge, and how just he's all this is built up in his mind, and how much has clouded him, and the dark side has clouded his mind, and he's just raw evil, raw power almost, almost as powerful as Vader. So imagine that. So 
seeing when they, like the first inter the first fight they have was short but it's really sweet because here you have this great moment vault malls like i've been waiting for this moment and you could just see the anger just come out of come out of mall to whenever to whenever he'd show up in the other episodes in the later episodes it became almost like this like back and forth like yin and yang like they're destined to keep this going kind of similar to two characters i've already mentioned before so what are the odds of that so maul kind of being that almost thorn in kenobi's side to where he's come after him like twice maybe three other times to murdering to murdering obi-wan kenobi's only chance at love that duchess from mandalore to becoming this powerful like crime syndicate leader to then it builds up to later on when maul finds out kenobi's still alive in star wars rebels and you have this great like almost like silent like yin and yang samurai fight between kenobi and maul and that they're they're not it's it's hard to put it but it's this great just moment of the two of them finding each other alone it's just silent it's no music there's just the two of them dueling each other out f until one of them dies and the fact that kenobi takes and gives maul the final blow is breathtaking to see obi-wan strike down his basically his rival or his arch nemesis this sith lord that all these years been seeking that revenge and then building up to this moment when he's stabbed by Kenobi and it's kind of honorable a little bit. That's what I think what I mean by the whole samurai aspect. It's honorable. It's not just about we need to do this forever. It's kind of like this is the final stand and whoever lives and whoever dies in this situation and this was so breathtaking and how they kind of just sit there afterwards and even before they begin the fight they're sitting there like as if they respect one another they're able to respect each other and realize you know what we gotta do this for honor we gotta f kind of basically put all ends aside and figure out who is going to live and who's going to die and it's just so amazing and this is just this was really awesome, and I owe it to to Clone Wars, to Rebels, to bringing these these this sort of like fight and this sort of saga in a way together. And those are my animated TV show showdowns. Let me know in the comments what are your favorite animated showdowns. Are there any I've forgotten? Let me know. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I do an awesome video every day, if not every week. Make sure you ring that bell to be notified of new videos, new content, all that fun stuff. Not sure when this will be uploaded, but it will take some time. It will, I know for a fact, because of technical difficulties I'm kind of going on right now. So, yeah, hopefully soon, fingers crossed. But let's say by the time this is uploaded, um, be sure to check out my previous videos. I've probably done my review for Mandalorian. I've probably talked about... Uh, maybe uh, Marvel What Ifs, maybe talked about some, uh, check out my, uh, my movie reviews, check, check out my other top 10 videos, check out my gaming videos. Um, look forward to, uh, I'm going to do comic reviews, I'm going to do more vlogs, I'm also going to uh, have up sometime, maybe soon, maybe before this or after this, a review I've requested to, I was requested to do of The Cube which we'll get more more details into that once that once I have kind of watched it and then reviewed it and then boom so anyways guys like I said like I always say leave your thoughts your opinions down below leave some suggestions or comments your questions concerns anything thanks for watching and I'll see you next time